Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thank you for joining me on this wet felting tutorial. Today we are making a felted rug that is often also called a vegan pelt. Felted fleece, felted pelt. I've come across all sorts of terms. Anyway, right now I'm showing you the assortment of wool in this bag of lamb fleeces from Hope Springs Farm. These are too delicate to go to the mill that we use So um, here in Georgia. So I am using these to make really soft, comfy rugs. The idea was originally to make cat beds, but these can be used for so many other things and you can make them whatever size and shape you want to. On the bed, I have a frame that I made out of PVC pipe and it is as wonky as it looks. Um, I don't want that. That's gross. Yuck. Um, and then because I'm going to be carrying this outside to do the felting, I really don't want a wet felt on my bed. That's just not going to work. Um, I have a mesh fabric laid over the frame and I'm going to just use that so I can carry the whole frame and wool and everything outside. But if you're not going to carry it around, you don't need this fabric inside your frame. Um, some people use plastic inside their frame. I, I don't know that it's necessary. I just do it. Maybe the frame and the wool stays put better. I don't know. Anyway, you do you. Experiment. Figure out what works best for you. So what I'm doing is pulling out a chunk of wool and kind of arranging it tip side down in my frame. You want the cut ends up because the cut ends is what you want to felt. The tips are the pretty floofy stuff that you want to use and, and feel and see. That's what makes these really pretty little rugs. So I'm just kind of finagling and figuring out how that chunk of fleece is going to lay and then I'm going to fill in the gaps and um, there's some orange stuff I don't want so I'm going to toss that. Uh, you can use any length of wool here I, I'm actually using quite a variety of lengths and that's going to make for a very neatly textured rug. So while I am piddling with getting all the locks put in place which I have sped up a little bit um, I would like to give a very warm welcome to new viewers and if you're a returning viewer welcome back. If you haven't already please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos as they come out and of course if you like today's video please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave comments questions and suggestions down in the comment section below. I will do my absolute best to answer all of your questions and I really do enjoy reading and responding to all your comments. Y'all are incredibly awesome and I love you all so much. So once you are finished fixing the density of your rug and you're really content with the thickness and the density of the wool, how it feels, it's going to spread out just a little bit during felting and some of those locks are going to felt completely. So I like to make mine really, really dense so that once it's all felted, it feels really good and comfy because that's what we're looking for here, or at least that's what I'm looking for. But by all means, do this your way. Everybody's going to do this just a little bit differently. And then we need to put something on the back to be able to felt it. And here I have some of the same wool, same breed, Gulf Coast Native, that I've carded up. I was scoured and carded. And I'm just putting extremely thin layers of fat on the back of this. And you want to go vertical and horizontal because the fleece, the fibers will felt together, will Velcro together better if they're going different directions. So I do a few really thin layers and then I've got a few scraps. So I'm going to put them on there and... Technically, I didn't need to go this last bit, but I kind of like a thicker base myself. It takes longer to felt it, but I really like the thicker base. Again, it's entirely up to you how much wool you put on here. And now I'm filling in the little 
thin spots, making sure I've got my felted base as even as I can, and then it's time to carry it outside. Once I have it outside, <clears throat> I put another mesh on top, and I'm going to actually felt through that mesh. So here I'm showing you, this is actually a different one where I was really thick on the batting, and it was actually too thick. So you don't wanna to go too terribly thick, especially with the breed that resists felting. So anyways, I am going to probably speed up all of the footage so that it does not take an hour to do because that is about how long it takes to scour, not scour, to felt a fleece. Right now you're watching real speed. I have a bunch of soap in this bucket of water. I guess I should give you a list of uh, supplies. So underneath everything, I have a piece of plastic. And then I have the frame with the mesh inside of it, the wool in the frame, and then another piece of mesh, a bucket of very warm water, a bar of soap. There's already soap in the water. Um, and, I'm, and then there's a pool noodle and a very textured fabric that I will roll the fleece in once I am done with the initial felting. And then some towels may be beneficial to help clean up some of the water. Since I am outside on the ground, I am kneeling on a rubber mat to protect my knees from the hard textured surface of my porch. <laughs> uh, because concrete, especially rough concrete, is not fun to kneel on, especially when your knees are incredibly bony, which most people's are. Um, and mine certainly are. So... What I am doing is just kind of patting down the rug and making sure, and you know, shoes just aren't going to work here, <laughs> not the way I'm sitting. So kind of patting it down, making sure I've got water everywhere I need water. And then I'm taking my bar of soap, getting it nice and sudsy and just kind of very, very gently rubbing it over the full surface including down around the edges because I want those edges to felt as well. Um, these rugs, with the way I'm doing them, they will have a little border of just felt, um, but that's okay. I don't mind that. And I kind of like the way it looks. So it is what it is. And then more, you know, padding and petting and gentle rubbing. Right now, nothing has felted and everything will shift if you're rough with it. So you gotta start off really, really gentle. And as things, as the wool starts to grab a hold of itself, I begin to gently massage. And the more the wool felts, the harder I massage. This is the longest part and it does take absolutely forever. And if you're not used to this type of work or you have a bad back, this is the part that kills the back. <laughs> so I will be shifting position periodically. You need a ton of soap and lots of water. You don't have to wash your wool beforehand because in this stage, it is going to get washed. Um, some people will flip the whole um, fleece and felt it from the other side a little bit. I don't do that because I don't want those locks felted. I just want the back of the rug felted. So I did pick up the fabric on top mainly to see how well the wool was sticking. It'll go through the fabric and make it really hard to pull that mesh fabric off um, when it's good and felted. So I want to check that every now and then and when the fabric is getting all wrinkly because the fabric's shifting on the wool, then I will pick it up and spread it back out again. Um, like I said, this is the part that takes forever and you're still watching real life speed. I won't speed it up until I get finished with this part of the voiceover. Um, so th this is slow. Now I think I will speed it up right here but um, this is only double speed and uh, this is just so that the video isn't ridiculously long because when they're long they take forever to upload um, and I just need to 
I don't like to wait forever. Anyway, um, my lack of patience is a none of your concern here. So lots of petting, lots of rubbing, constant. This, this takes patience. So um, enjoy the process and enjoy the therapeutic work here. You can work out your anger once the felting begins. You can really start working out your anger. You can get real aggressive. You can, you know, fuss at your kids in your mind while you're doing it or have a really intense conversation about something that's full of energy, whether that's positive or negative. Um, this is a great way to channel that excess energy and, um, or you can, you know, watch a YouTube video like I like to do while I'm working. Although with water, I wouldn't recommend having your phone or your computer nearby because, well, you don't want it getting all wet. You certainly don't want it getting yucky from the wool, the grossness. <laughs> we will at the end be washing the rug and I will show you how I finish them. Um, so you get to see the entire process start to finish today. I did a live version of this on Facebook several months ago and I <clears throat> I don't know if that video is still on the Woolen Fiber Arts um, community group or not and I don't remember what month it was but it looks like it was really early spring because I am wearing pants and socks and you know if it was warm weather I would not be dressed like that so I suspect it was very early spring and this was quite a warm day, although not super hot. Once the wool has begun really felting through the fabric, you can take the fabric off, which I didn't even notice while talking that I had done that. So here I am really scrubbing with extra soap all around the edges to make sure those edges are good and felted. And then more of the rubbing, um, I've heard someone else that had taken a felting class told me during my live on Facebook that you're supposed to do this stage of the felting until the locks start to come through. And I'm actually going to try that, but with a different backing. So I'm going to use a fleece that is easier to felt than this one. Um, because when your fleece resists felting and the backing resists felting, it's really hard to get that to happen, to have those locks start to come through the backing. And when your backing is too thick, it's also very, very difficult. But I have found if you skimp on this step, you will lose locks later on. Um, as you're using the rug, some of the locks will pull out if they're not firmly felted in place. Then again, if you're too aggressive with the stages that we haven't gotten to yet, um, could cause felting on those locks that you don't want. What you want is the locks to felt to the back. So like I've been doing, experiment. I think I've said that several times already. Rub it, turn it, rub it a lot, turn it. <laughs> And repeat until you are sick and tired of doing this and your entire porch, or <laughs> my porch, is completely covered in yucky, gross water. Um, or at least the plastic. And I think my it gets on my pants and that rubber mat that I'm kneeling on. But that's okay. You know, it is what it is. Add more soap as you need it. Add more water as you need it. Don't skimp on the soap. There is no such thing as too much soap when you are felting, especially a fleece that resists felting like this one. So yeah, extra work for myself here because I am using up wool that does not like to be felted. Sometimes I use my fingertips and I really massage and allow the whole uh, fleece to get wrinkled up. Um, Oh, at some point I also removed the frame. So you don't need the frame for the full process, just the beginning. I hope you noticed when I took that off because I sure didn't. Anyway, have fun, work hard, and rub some more. When you think you're done, keep going. 
I think I might turn some music on and just let you enjoy that, or I will continue to ramble on and on. Oh yes, here I flipped it over and I'm going to, this was an experiment, just gently felt from the front. I'm pulling off locks that are falling apart, digging my fingers in there and gently massaging as if you were massaging your scalp. Um, trying not to overdo it too much, but knowing that these locks, um, they don't like to felt. So I feel like I'm safe here. And then I'm utilizing the texture of my porch, lock side down, kind of massaging the whole thing against the texture of the porch through the plastic. And now, you know, rubbing it against itself as if I'm trying to hand wash it and trying to get as much different direction of motion as possible to get all those layers that I laid on there to felt together and then checking to make sure there's not too much felting going on on the top side. Um, I do believe I may have over felted this one just a little bit. Again, I'm utilizing the texture of my porch, kind of scrubbing the back of this rug against the porch texture. You want a lot of texture, so utilize what you can. Once it is quite thoroughly felted, then it is time to roll it up in a textured thing. I'm using a non-skid shelf liner and look at that yuck that's coming out. Okay, let's get some of that out of the way because that is really, really disgusting and gross and I don't want that getting all over me. So let's just dump that off the porch and carry on. We no longer need plastic down, so we're just going to roll and roll and roll and apparently I'm not going to use the uh the noodle hmm the pool noodle pool noodle and stockings tied on it um is supposed to help with this stage <laughs> so what I'm doing is I am rolling back and forth a back forth motion um and I'm doing that 100 times and then I'm rotating the fleece rolling it up again and the other direction and doing 100 again I tend to do four to 500 um, back and forth rolls. They're very small rolls. I will rotate the whole thing after every 10 or so, um, or just whenever I feel like it. And I think that's why I wasn't using the pool noodle because you constantly have to take it out and redo it. But at the same time, I was really struggling to hold everything together. So tie it up and it makes life a whole lot easier. Um, I'm putting a good bit of pressure on this and I'm going fairly quickly uh, but you can do this at your speed whatever speed is comfortable for you and you just do this what feels like forever. It really helps to um, activate the felting on all the different layers of backing specifically. Now I'm flipping it over so that I can get it from the front side, the top side. I want every bit of this thing thoroughly felted so that it will not come apart. If I vacuum this, I don't want locks coming off of it. So as you do this part, lots and lots of nasty water comes out and soap, and that's perfectly okay. That's what's going to happen. It's normal. So just be prepared if you're doing this indoors to have a giant mess to clean up. <laughs> Maybe a garage or something would be better than inside the house. I quite enjoy being outside working on these fleeces because um, the outdoors is soothing to my soul. I am a farmer at heart but I live in a place that does not allow for animals and not much in the way of gardening. So I have to live through farm sitting and visiting other people's farms and working in other people's gardens. Um, but working with wool has really helped to sort of bridge the gap that I feel. I also do some, um, occasionally, not always, will buy a whole bunch of produce from the farmer's market or a roadside stand or something and I will can it or you know I love to make applesauce, apple butter, 
preserves, things like things of that nature. I've never made successfully made jelly before. <laughs> that is on my list of things to accomplish. Um, but you know, I have used a dehydrator and made my own apple chips and I just didn't really mesh with the dehydrator I had. So um, I ended up giving it to a friend of mine who was dehydrating herbs for her own um, tinctures and teas and salves and things like that. So um, she needed more dehydrator space than she had. So I was like, you know what? I'm not using it. It's taking up space. You can have it. Anyhow, once you are, I'll get back to the video here. Once you are done rolling and rolling and rolling, then I'm, I like to fold it up and scrub it and um, squeeze it and just really manipulate the back specifically because um, the more you move it, the more those fibers felt together and shrink. And then the last step is throwing it on the ground with quite a lot of aggression over and over and over again. Um, this is the stage I believe where I overdo it and I end up felting part of the locks down that I didn't want to felt. Um, but I don't notice that until I'm rinsing it out later. So at this point, the fleece is only halfway cleaned. It's still a little bit dirty and I will have to finish cleaning it um, once we take it in the house where I have a sink. Um, throwing it on the ground a million times, uh, it's, for some weird reason, it's magical and it does cause the felting to really take place and um, causes the, the whole thing to shrink down a good bit. So I am wondering why but you know I don't understand the science of it I just know that it works all right so now it is time to wash and make sure that everything is thoroughly felted so I'm starting with the fleece side down and then flip over and look how nasty that water is <laughs> we're trying to get the excess soap out and I am being rough because again I know this fleece does resist felting so or this particular breed so why not I will use a little bit of power scour um, to make sure I get as much of the dirt and lanolin out as possible. And if there are parts that didn't felt, I will work a little extra hard on that from this top portion, top side. Um, and then if, if there are tips that are really muddy, I'll spend a little extra time working the dirt out of those. There is my power, unicorn power scour, which I do sell in the shop. If anybody is interested in getting some of this amazing cleaner, I highly recommend it. It is the absolute best for scouring wool and works great for a lot of other uses as well. It is pricey, but it is worth every penny. I will not use anything else. I have tried so many other detergents for scouring wool and I am not happy with any of them as not as happy as I am with the unicorn. So naturally I want to promote unicorn power scour as I am a uh, distributor for them. And, but mainly it's because their product is superior to all others that I have tried and I've tried a lot. <laughs> so now it's just time to get as much yuck out as possible, which requires lots of rinsing and squeezing and rinsing and squeezing. Of course, after I get it as clean and soap free as I want it to be, then I throw it in the spin dryer and let the spin dryer get the excess water out. If you don't have a spin dryer, I would recommend rolling it in several towels and standing, stomping, jumping on it or putting a bunch of bricks on top and letting it sit for a minute. That will work too. You just want the water pressed out as much as possible so that these will dry. And then you want to lay it out in a sunny spot to dry. Um, the sun does a wonderful job of drying the wool and making it smell fresh. Of course, the Unicorn Power Scour also helps it to smell really fresh. So um, if the one scour doesn't work, put a little more soap on there and do it again. I am gently scrubbing to get as much dirt out of those tips as I can. And once it's dry, I will get any little burrs and stuff like that out right now. I don't want to rip 
the wet wool, so I'm leaving those alone for the most part. Um, veg matter can be removed, that's stuck in there, can be removed after it's all dry. Here I am trying to wring out as much water as possible out of this little thing, and then it's going right in the spin dryer. Here I'm checking to see if anything over felted or is really loose. There's one that is not really attached, um, but I'll either pull that off or I will felt a little bit more. So here's the spin dryer action. I'm not sure if I'm putting the top rubber thing in like you're supposed to or not, but you know, so we wait for about 30 seconds to a full minute for the water to come out and then I like to tip it to get excess water out of the drain pipe that's somewhere inside the spin dryer and look how gorgeous that fleece is it is so beautiful I'll lay it out to dry and then once it's completely dry I will run a bore bristle brush over it and it will be ready to use Brushing your felted rug is not entirely necessary, but I like to do it to get any trapped dirt out of those tips because rain tips are a thing here in Georgia and they tend to get very, very muddy. As you can see, some of the wool is pulling out, but it isn't an excessive amount. So I think I did a fairly decent job here, but brushing like I said, it's not necessary. It does fluff up the wool. If you want to maintain the look of the locks as they are, then don't brush. Um, as I'm brushing, I'm finding little bits of veg matter stuck in here and there within the wool, and I go ahead and pull those out. Um, it is a rather intense process because this brush doesn't really dig into the wool. It is a very soft brush, and that's what I want. I just want to gently floof the dirt out of the tips. That's about it. And find all that little burrs and bugs and stuff that tends to get trapped in fleeces. So again, this is not a necessary part of the process, but it is something that I like to do. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.